All right, guys, I have been asked to come up with a little bit of review stuff for the exam three. So I'm gonna do this maybe in a couple different videos, but here's one that's gonna have a little bit of Lewis structures, Vesper theory, hybridization, maybe some resonance structures all in one video. Okay. I can't remember which examples have been on quizzes and exams. I'm working from my house, so I don't have access to all of that right this second. So let's try NO2 minus. This is nitrite. We've seen nitrate. This is nitrite. Okay. So first let's do the Lewis structure. So there's five valence electrons, six times two, and the negative one charge means an extra electron, which gives us a total of 18. Okay. The nitrogen is the farthest away from fluorine, so it's going to be the central atom. Two single bonds. We've used four. We have 14 left. We start with the outside atoms first and work our way in. Okay. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. We have two left, so they go on the center. Now we are out of electrons, so now we check for octets. This oxygen has eight, this oxygen has eight, and this one has two, four, six. So we need to form a double bond. Now we have two options, so we actually would get two resonance structures, and I'm going to draw them both. Okay, let's start with one of these first. So if we put the nitro or the double bond on the left side, we get one possible resonance structure. And if we put the double bond on the other side, we get the other possible structure, the other possible resonance structure. Okay, in terms of checking formal charges here, this is six minus four minus two. Six is how many valence electrons it normally has off the periodic table, minus four dots, minus two lines connected to that oxygen, which is zero. This nitrogen is five minus two minus three, which is zero. And this oxygen is six minus six minus one, which is negative one, which is fine because it has to add up to negative one. Okay, this one's gonna be the same thing in reverse. Because this one's less cluttered, that's the one I'm going to do the uh, the molecular geometry for. So, anything that has more than one atom attached is a central atom and it needs its own geometry. So the nitrogen here has one, two, three groups, single bonds, double bonds, triple bonds, and lone pairs are all one group. So it has a single bond, double bond, and a lone pair. So that's three electron groups. One of those three groups is a lone pair. If you look at your chart, which I don't have in front of me because you know I'm working from home, we will see that if you have three electron groups and one lone pair, this ends up forming a bent geometry or angular, whichever term you like. Okay. The two resonance structures should have the same geometries, they should have the same hybridization, so I'm just gonna do one of these. So this nitrogen, um, for hybridization, what we need to look at is how many pi bonds there are. Anywhere you have Everywhere you have two things grouped together is a sigma bond. Anything you have, anytime you have more than one bond in between, the extra ones are pi bonds. So if you have a double bond, you'll have one pi bond. If you have a triple bond, you'll have two. So the nitrogen has an S and three P orbitals to work with. We have one set that is a pair. I usually deal with those first. Sorry, this pen is terrible. And then one, two, three bonds. So we need three unpaired electrons. Okay, we have one pi bond, so one of these p orbitals gets used up, and we merge whatever is left. We merge the orbitals. We have an s and two p orbitals, so the hybridization is sp2. Okay, so we have the geometries, we have the resonance structures, we have, or sorry, we have the Lewis structures, we have the resonance structures for those, we have the geometry, and we have the hybridization. Okay. Let's try the same thing for a slight variation. Let's try SO2, okay? Sulfur has six valence electrons, oxygen has six valence electrons times two, which would be also 18, similar to the last one, but that's okay. Sulfur is farther away from fluorine, so I'm gonna put that in the middle. We give the outer, elect outer atoms what they need first, okay? So those oxygens have their octets, but right now we've hit 16 electrons, we have two in the middle. You'll know that that's pretty similar to what we had up here. Okay, sulfur needs an octet. So right now it only has six. So if we do that, we end up with still the lone pairs. Okay, 
And if we check the formal charges, this is going to be 6 minus 4 minus 2 is 0. This is going to be 6 minus 6 minus 1 is negative 1. And this is going to be 6 minus 2 minus 3 is positive 1. Okay, because sulfur is in the third row, it can actually have more than an octet. So this will actually form another double bond. Doing so will violate the octet rule, but it also gets rid of the charges. This is 6 minus 4 minus 2 is 0. This is also 6 minus 4 minus 2 is 0. And this is 6 minus 2 minus 4 is 0. Okay, so everything's 0 here. Okay, in terms of the geometry, this has 1, 2, 3 groups. And one of those is a lone pair. So we get the exact same geometry as the last one. Not surprising, similar molecules. Okay, as far as the hybridization here, Sulfur has an s orbital, three p orbitals, but it also has five d orbitals. Okay, so if we look at this, we have one lone pair and one, two, three, four bonds. We need four unpaired electrons. We have two pi bonds. We have a pi bond on both sides, so two of these are being used up to make two pi bonds. Now we merge the orbitals that are left. We don't care how many electrons are in them, but there is one s orbital, one p orbital, and one d orbital. So the hybridization on this would be s, p, d. Okay. There are no resonance structures because it doesn't need them. Okay. Here, to stabilize everything, we have multiple structures to spread those charges around. Everything here is zero, so it's a super happy molecule, so there's no need for resonance structures. Let's try one more. Um, let's try SO3 2 minus. So SO4 2 minus is sulfate. This is sulfite. Sulfur has six valence electron electrons. Oxygen has six times three. And there's another two electrons available because of this negative two charge. So six times three is 18, plus another six would be 24, plus two would be 26 electrons. Sulfur is the farthest away from fluorine, so it's the best central atom. We're going to have three oxygens attached. We give the outer atoms their electrons first, which is what we're doing here. Sorry for random sirens. I live in Westfield, and they that's how they do it, I guess. Sorry. Ignore that. All right, so we've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. We have two left, so they go on the central atom. At this point, everything has an octet. If we check our charges, what we'll see is that this is six minus six minus one is negative one, negative one, negative one, and this is six minus two minus three is positive one. So we're gonna add up to negative two, so we can't get rid of all the charges, but we can get rid of at least one, okay? The sulfur will violate the octet rule to get rid of this plus one charge. So we are going to have one double bond. We have three equivalent structures, which means we're going to get three resonance structures. So I'm going to start out by drawing it on the left because it doesn't really matter. If we do this, this sulfur, has, or sorry, this oxygen has six minus four minus two is zero. 6 minus 6 minus 1, just like it was over here, is negative 1 and negative 1. And now the sulfur is 6 minus 2 minus 4 is also 0. So we actually got rid of a bunch of charges here. Now, resonance structures, because there are three equivalent spots, all three of those are resonance structures. On the exam, if I ask you to draw all the resonance structures, this is what I would want. I would want you to draw all the possible options. Okay. Um, if I just ask you to draw the Lewis structure, um, I just pick one of the three and draw it and it's fine. We're running on the assumption that all three of these are pretty equivalent. Okay, so those are our three resonance structures. Okay, let's look at the geometry of these. I'm just going to pick the bottom one because it has the most space around it. Okay, so the sulfur has one, two, three, four groups, and one of them is a lone pair. 
If you look at your chart, four groups would make it some variation of a tetrahedral. One lone pair makes it a trigonal pyramidal. Okay. As far as the hybridization, we have, oh, wrong pen. We have a pi bond here, but otherwise everything else is sigma bonds. So the sulfur, I guess I'll do this over here. This sulfur has an S, three P orbitals, one, two, three, four D orbitals. If it violates the octet rule, you will have to have a D orbital in there somewhere. So we have a lone pair, and then one, two, three, four bonds, so four unpaired electrons. We have one pi bond, and then we just merge whatever is left, which is an S, two P's, and a D. So the hybridization here is SP two D. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll try to get a uh, gas law couple of problems up here in a few minutes. Thanks.